It's hard to understate just how critical electrical systems are on modern boats. Everything these days seems to require power. And over the almost eight years we've lived aboard Starry Horizons, I've done a lot of electrical troubleshooting. I remember just how daunting it was trying to grasp the basics and get the confidence to tackle things myself. But if you're going to successfully live aboard a boat, this is a skill you need to have. So today, let's embark on a Marine Electrical 101 series that will, hopefully, give you a good foundation for success. Welcome! I'm David from Out Chasing Stars, and I'd like to invite you to sit back, relax, and let's talk boats. I'm going to start off with the obligatory disclaimer. I am not a trained electrician. The knowledge I'm sharing with you has come from working closely with electricians when we've hired them to help with projects, a lot of reading, and I'll be generous and say a fair amount of practical experience. There aren't many systems I haven't dived into on Starry Horizons by now. Also, Electricity can be extremely dangerous. You need to approach it with a healthy respect and be sure to take proper precautions when you're working with it. And if a project is out of your depth, finding a good electrician is an excellent investment. Now, with that out of the way, let's talk some basic terms and concepts so we can all make sure we're speaking the same language. This next part, it takes me all the way back to those high school physics days where I remember thinking, I'm never actually going to need this because I'm going to study finance. That turned out well for me, didn't it? Regardless, what did stick with me was an analogy that compared electricity to water flowing through a hose. At its most basic, electricity is just the flow of electrons, aka the water, through a conductor, aka the hose. On a boat, that conductor will most commonly be a wire. Now, there are lots of other videos on YouTube that will do a deep dive on all things electricity, but let's try to approach this from a decently high level with an eye towards how it relates to boats. You're going to commonly hear things like a 12 volt battery bank or 120 volt shore power connection, but what is a volt? Volts, they are the units used to measure voltage and voltage is the pressure pushing electrons through a wire. The higher the voltage, the more pressure on those electrons. In practical terms, the higher the voltage, the smaller the diameter wire that will be needed. That can reduce wiring costs and makes it easier to fit wire in conduits on a boat. When you get to bigger boats, you'll often see perhaps 24 volt battery banks to take advantage of the increased pressure of the higher voltage and the smaller wires needed for a wire run. We also talk quite a lot about the amp draw equipment will require. For example, our isotherm refrigerator draws 5 amps at 12 volts when the compressor is running. So amps is another term you'll need to be familiar with. Amps is short for amperes and they're a unit of measure for current. Current is the speed at which electrons flow through the wire. On a boat, your equipment will primarily draw current from the batteries. You need to carefully size your battery bank, the equipment you're using, and the wiring so you don't run out of power or overtax your system. It sounds complicated, but stick with me and we'll get there. The concept of resistance will help in some of those calculations. Now, resistance, it's measured in ohms, and for me, this one is fairly easy to picture because of its inverse relationship to wire size. The larger the wire, the less resistance the electrons face moving through it. Decrease the size of the wire, and the electrons stack up as they try to get through. If you have a piece of equipment, say an anchor windlass, that requires a lot of power, then you'll need a very big wire to transport that power. If the wire is too small and the resistance is too high, you can suffer from significant voltage drop, which means the equipment may not work, and resistance can manifest itself as heat, which can lead to things like melting and fires, both of which we really want to avoid. The last term we need to talk about is watts, which is the unit of measure for power. In addition to amps, you'll commonly see the power consumption for equipment listed in watts. For example, 
our 12 inch Raymarine chart plotter consumes almost 16 watts of power. This also works the other way around as well. You'll see things like solar panels rated in watts, but this will be based on the watts they generate. The technical definition of power is the rate at which electrical energy is transferred in a circuit. The larger the watts, the more power that is required to run that equipment, or the more power that's generated by the solar panel. In order to increase the power, you have two options. You can either increase the voltage or increase the current. And that's a perfect segue to the next topic we need to discuss, equations. As equations go, the power formula is incredibly simple. It states that power is equal to voltage times current. Power is represented by the letter P, voltage is represented by the letter V, and current is represented by the letter I. We have the French to thank for that last oddity, as it originates from the French phrase for current intensity, and it was used by André-Marie Ampere, who was so influential, he got the unit of current named after him. But back to the equation. It may be simple, but it is incredibly powerful. On a boat, we will pretty easily know the voltage of the system that we're working on. In this case, let's use our 12 volt system, and earlier, I mentioned that our isotherm fridge draws 5 amps of current. We can plug in the numbers and calculate that the fridge uses 60 watts of power when it's running. Now, what if we know the wattage and the voltage of the equipment and need to calculate the amp draw in order to determine how large of a wire we need to run? This is still quite simple, but needs a bit of algebra. If we divide by the voltage, we get the equation current equals power divided by voltage. So let's use our Raymarine chart plotter example again. It consumes 16 watts and is on our 12 volt system. So the current draw is 1.3 amps. We could then take this information along with the length of the wire run and with a handy little chart, determine the size of the wire needed for installation. Now, there are two other concepts that I wanna to touch on that also result from very simple equations. And that is amp hours versus watt hours. These are not some new way of telling time that you've never heard of. A watt hour is a unit of energy that measures the capacity of power in watts moving over time, specifically one hour of time. So that Raymarine chart plotter that is rated at 16 watts will use 16 watts of power in one hour and 32 watts in two hours. As you can probably guess, the equation for watt hours is equal to the total number of watts times the total number of hours. If I want to know how many watts that chart plot will use if we have it on all day long during a passage, the equation would be 16 watts times 24 hours for a total of 384 watt hours. Amp hours are going to be a very similar calculation. It is a measurement of current in amps flowing over the same one hour period. If we use our isotherm fridge for 10 hours while it draws 5 amps, we've used up 50 amp hours. Traditionally, batteries have been rated in amp hours. A 200 amp hour battery can theoretically expend 200 amps of energy in one hour. And looking at amp hours is a convenient way to compare the total amount of energy that similar batteries can store. But there is a drawback. Measuring in amp hours doesn't take voltage into account. That makes it very difficult to compare apples to apples when you're looking at 12 volt systems versus 24 volt systems, or even more dramatically, 12 volts versus 120 volt systems. And our old friend, the power formula proves this. 10 amp hours at 12 volts is way less power than 10 amp hours at 120 volts. So with boats becoming an ever more complex mix of systems that utilizes different voltages, using watt hours is becoming much more common in order to make sure things can easily compare to each other. But hopefully, now you have an understanding of both concepts. The last thing we're going to talk about today are the two different types of currents. Alternating currents, also known as AC, versus direct current, also known as DC. Alternating current was developed by Nikola Tesla. In the US, we have 120 and 240 volt AC power, while in a lot of the rest of the world, 230 volt AC power is used. 
Now the current in AC power is reversible. And here it's time for one more vocabulary word. The number of times per second the electricity changes direction is measured in hertz. This is the frequency. In the US, we use 60 hertz AC power. And again, a lot of the rest of the world is different using 50 hertz AC power. It is important to know the voltage and the frequency a country uses because this can cause issues when trying to plug into shore power. But that's a very complicated topic that will need to be discussed in another video. AC power is what is typically used in your home and for big appliances. Things like a microwave, a toaster, or a tea kettle will be AC powered. On a boat, if you're plugged in at the dock, your source of AC power will come from shore power. But when you're at anchor, if you want to run AC systems, you'll either need a generator or an inverter. Inverters will take DC power from your batteries and convert it to AC, but this isn't a very efficient process. And since I just mentioned DC power, let's touch on that as well. It was developed by Thomas Edison, and the current only flows one way. No reversing or hertz to worry about. It's much easier to store, and pretty much every boat on the water these days will have some mix of 12, 24, or 48-volt DC systems aboard. Now, there are quite a few ways to generate DC power. Almost every boat out cruising now will have solar panels. You'll also see quite a few boats with wind generators. Hydro generators are less common, but amazing for boats that are consistently doing long passages. We can also use the alternators on our engines, and believe it or not, there are some DC generators out on the market as well. So, to cap things off, let's do a quick rundown of how we utilize both DC and AC power on Starry Horizons. Our 12 volt DC battery house bank provides power for most of the systems on the boat. All our navigation instruments, the fridge, the freezer, water pumps, the fans, lights, they all run off DC power. We also use a 12 volt dedicated start battery to start up our engines. We do have AC powered systems as well. These are our bigger electrical appliances like our TV, all the air conditioning units, and even our water maker. We supply power to these systems through a mix of our inverter and a very big generator. If you don't want to run a generator all the time to power your AC loads, you need to make sure you have a large enough DC battery bank and inverter to handle those loads. And that will be the perfect place to stop because the next video will talk about how to perform a power audit and determine just how much power you'll use on the boat. So thanks for sticking with me through this rather technical discussion. I hope I found some way to make it interesting and get you ready for all the fun things we have to talk about next. Now, if you haven't already, make sure to click up here to subscribe and keep up with all of our upcoming videos. Or you can click down here and go through the rabbit hole of our previous adventures. Thanks again for watching. We'll see y'all another day, another bay.